let us deal with the poem Daffodils by William Wordsworth. So far we have seen the different poems, the kinds of poems and here comes a very beautiful poem written by William Wordsworth. Let us first have a brief introduction about the poet. William Wordsworth is a 19th century literary stalwart. He is the most influential pioneer of the English Romantic poetry. And he is the greatest poet of nature. He is termed as devotee or the nature's priest. He has an excellent skill to pen down the beauty of nature. Nature occupies an independent status and is not treated as just a casual passing manner by him. Under the influence of nature, he experiences a very mystic mood and a transcendental feeling. And this particular poem, Daffodils, was published in the year 1815. Here, the poet takes a walk along the lake along with his sister Dorothy Wordsworth in the countryside of England's Lake District and it describes daffodils on their way. It just creates a long lasting impression in the mind of the readers. The first impression is actually the very best, best impression and there are a lot of recurring images described in this poem. This poem exemplifies a very good example of romantic poem. There are lots of images, images of humanity, nature and actually the poem comprises four sestets. Sestets refer to a set of six lines and here we have a set of four sestets and let us see line by line explanation of the poem. The poem begins like this. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills. So here the poet refers to himself as wandering lonely. So the very beginning of the poem states the loneliness of the poet. See the poet is very much in a depressed mood. He is very serious in his mood. He is in a very dull mood. He is very depressed and this is shown in the very first line of the poem. He is wandering lonely as a cloud. So how does the cloud wander? It is just floating on high over the whales and hills. Whales refer to the valley, the valley and hills. So he is aloof, he feels very secluded, very isolated. So the speaker feels as if he is a very lonely cloud. He wants some sort of belongingness towards nature. So the next line, when all at once I saw a crowd. So here the poet refers to the bunch of flowers, the bunch of daffodils as crowd, a host of golden daffodils. So here he describes the scenic beauty of the path. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. So here he describes very lively how he is able to see. We are able to get a very vivid first hand picture of the daffodils. So we are able to understand that the setting of the poem is near the lake and it picturizes every nuances of daffodils movements. So where it is present? Beside the lake. It is by the side of the lake. It is present under the tree 
and it is dancing in the breeze continuous as the stars the chain and twinkle on the milky way they stretched in never ending line along the margin of the bay you can imagine a bay of water and among them the color of the daffodils is in contrast with the blue color of the lake daffodils as you all know it is yellow in color isn't it so the color of the flower is in direct contrast with the color of the bay the water so he compares the flowers with the stars like how the star shines like how the stars have a radiant color the daffodils also have radiance in them so he portrays the position of its growth also 10000 saw i at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance so see the adjective used for the word dance he uses the adjective sprightly so sprightly means very lively how do the daffodils dance so he can just see 10000 daffodils at a glance at a single glance he is able to see 10000 daffodils what do they do actually they are just tossing their heads you can see the children tossing their heads so he compares the da- daffodils with that of a very large crowd of people tossing their heads and they are just dancing in a very lively manner so these are very famous lines so moving their heads is in accordance with the breeze in accordance with the tune of the breeze they just nod their head the waves beside them danced but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee so you note the point the poet is able to see the waves in the water of the bay but what do the daffodils do they are able to win and outdo the dance of the waves of water so in the competition between in the dance competition between the water and the flower daffodils the daffodils is the ultimate winner it has won the competition so the glinting of the waves at bay is being mentioned here how they nod their head and dance to the du- tune of the breeze so here the poet is overwhelmed by the dance of the daffodils that is compared with that of the waves a poet could not buy be gay in such a jocund company so here the poet refers to his company with nature as jocund a very joyous he feels it quite comfortable with nature a poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company he feels it at home when he is with nature so see girls you might be residing in the hostel and you may not feel at home in the beginning in the initial stage when you are in the hostel but here the poet is not at all feeling any sort of uncomfortableness he is quite comfortable he is quite friendly with nature he feels at home with nature so he is very cheerful when he sees the daffodils he enjoys the company of nature that's what is conveyed through these lines a poet could not but be gay gay means very happy so he feels very comfortable with daffodils gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought so he is just not able to take his eyes away from the flowers he is just gazing at them can you just 
imagine he is unable to pluck his eyes pluck his vision out of the sight of daffodils he admires he adores the beauty of daffodils in a stretch continuously he is watching the daffodils he is gazing and gazing but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought he doesn't look upon the consequences he doesn't think about what will he gain out of it what is the use of gazing at the daffodils he doesn't think about it at all the only thing he sees is a very positive spirit he gets a very positive vibe when he sees the daffodils that is what he expects and here daffodils is actually a symbol which symbolizes the arrival of the bright spring so it is a symbol of a revival a rebirth a renewal a new beginning in the life of the poet and it represents beauty in nature so the poet suggests humans to notice the natural elements around them so this is what is the very message of the poem this is the theme of the poem human beings should learn to admire nature the each and every element of nature should be watched carefully by human beings and it teaches nature teaches many lessons to human beings so here we have a lot of figures of speech so the first one is simile so simile is a figure of speech which is a comparison indicating along with the phrase or the word as so like etc so here we have i wandered lonely as a cloud the poet compares himself with the cloud and here we have continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way here once again the daffodils they are compared to that of the stars in the galaxy milky way and here we have a visual imagery so visual imagery is a visual treat the movement of the flowers with the breeze the whole poem is an example of visual imagery here we see beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze you can very well imagine all those scenes in your mind you get a visual picture of the daffodils they stretched in never ending line across along the margin of the bay so you can imagine a very bright yellow line of the daffodils along the bay so these are the figures of speech present and very well we can see that the poet personifies daffodils it adds human characteristics to the flower though the flower is a non living thing it is treated as if it is a living thing they stretched in never ending line along the margin of the bay 10000 saw i at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance usually only the living things they have the power to power of mobility or movement but here movement is associated with flowers which doesn't have any life and here we have the figure of speech the poison dictin that is the repeated use of coordinating conjunctions in order to connect the different items in a sentence here we see and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils here there is the usage of two conjunctions the conjunction and is repeatedly used in order to give emphasis to the point he conveys he wants to convey the point that his heart is very pleasant he enjoys being with the daffodils so this is what 
is the poem about here we have hyperbole which is exaggerating narrative here the description of daffodils is done in a very exaggerated manner everything is being given in a high tone continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way they stretched a never ending line along the margin of a bay so everything is in a very exaggerated tone so i hope you enjoyed the poem thank you students